Hey guys, Heidi Preeb here. This week I am trying a new thing where I make shorter videos and see if I am capable of doing that. I find it funny when people are like, oh, I don't know what to talk about to pass the time. I'm like, I think so much in words that it is very difficult for me to make short videos where I do not overexpand on things, but we're gonna try that this week and see how it goes. So today I wanted to talk about three early signs that you are healing from the fearful avoidant attachment style. And these are gonna be things that might not be as dramatic or as profound as you might hope, but they're more like signposts that kind of show you you're on the right path to changing the way that you show up interpersonally and independently. So I made another video called The Four Signs of Attachment Healing, where I dragged the process of attachment healing through the model of conscious competency, where we basically talk about how at first you are playing out your patterning without being aware of your patterning. Then at stage two, you're playing out your patterning, but you are aware of your patterning. Stage three is when you're able to show up in a different way, but it takes conscious and intentional effort. And stage four is when you're able to show up in a different way without conscious and intentional effort. So most of these signs are gonna be centered somewhere in steps two or three. So either becoming aware of your patterning or being able to change your patterning with conscious intention. So early sign number one that you're starting to heal from the fearful avoidant attachment style is that you're able to consciously recognize when you're feeling disorganized and you're able to refrain from acting or making any major decisions when you're in that state. So this is actually a piece of advice that I stole from the Therapists Uncensored podcast, which is an awesome podcast on attachment theory if you guys are ever looking for one. They talked about how if you have a fearful or a disorganized attachment style, one of the best things you can do for yourself is simply recognize when you're kind of in that state where your fight or flight system is activated and you're not sure whether you want to get closer or pull away and it feels disorienting and challenging for you to know how you want to show up in that moment, one of the best things you can do is simply recognize that you're in that state. Remind yourself that there is a you underneath this reaction pattern that is calm, that is stable, that is able to make well-reasoned, thoughtful decisions and decide that you're not going to make any decisions in this state. You're going to wait until you have physiologically returned to that baseline state in order to consider things from a calmer place. And if you are able to do this, you're going to save yourself a lot of angst as a fearful avoidant because when we're in that activated, disorganized, fearful avoidant state, it can feel like you don't know if you want to get closer to someone, if you want to pull away forever. But if you're able to recognize my nervous system is on fire right now, I want to go in a million in different directions and that probably means that I shouldn't be making major decisions or even interacting with someone in a particularly intense way right now it is going to save you a lot of heartache because you're finally going to start recognizing my calm regulated adult self should be the one making decisions and if this decision is really as important as I think it is it can afford to wait until I've returned to that state and I'll let that person decide Okay, so obviously this takes practice, but once again, sign number one that you're heading in the direction of healing from this attachment style is that you're able to recognize when you cannot be trusted to make important decisions because you are in that dysregulated state and having an awareness that that state is not who you are. And this is also a really cool step because it means that you are able to detach your identity from your reaction patterns, right? You're now able to separate those difficult behaviors or the trauma that you're experiencing from your sense of self. And that goes a very long way as you move through the rest of the healing process. Sign number two that you're starting to heal from the fearful avoidant attachment style is that you no longer think of yourself as bad, unworthy of love or commitment phobic. You simply recognize your attachment wounding for what it is. So again, this is about being in stage two of that conscious competency model and understanding that the way you're showing up is not a result of you being flawed or a bad person or incapable of love. It's a result of the early conditioning you had around relationships and it isn't necessarily reflective of the way that you want to be showing up in the world. So very early on in life, I think a lot of fearful avoidance until they become aware of their patterning around their attachment systems, fear that they are just flawed, that they are bad people, that there's something wrong with them. This is true to an extent of every insecure attachment style, by the way. But for the fearful avoidance, it tends to be a little bit more conscious and on the surface of their awareness. So when you begin to recognize my behavior and the way that I show up in relationships is not the same thing as who I am and what my morals and values are, and that a lot of these behaviors have been reinforced through conditioning for me, but it's not necessarily what I would choose had I got to choose early on in life which types of reactions I would have towards relationships, that is a really important milestone in the healing process because once again, you're now able to start internalizing that secure worldview of I'm okay, 
you're okay. Instead of the fearful avoidance default worldview, which is I'm not okay, you're not okay. So growing up as a fearful avoidant, you tend to internalize, I can't be trusted, but neither can other people. And often the first steps in the healing process involve getting rid of that inner critic and starting to learn I can be trusted. The actions that I've taken because of the way that I was raised and the conditioning that I had are not necessarily indicative of who I truly am as a human being, allows you to move closer to that I'm okay part of the worldview, right? Where you're able to trust and rely on yourself because you no longer believe that there's something deeply wrong with you at your core. Sign number three that you're starting to heal from the fearful avoidant attachment style is that you no longer feel deeply critical or triggered by people who display emotional vulnerability. So a really big part of having any sort of avoidant attachment style is having internalized on a very deep level that it's not okay to show need, to show vulnerability, or to show any other emotions that you might perceive to be kind of weak that might have gotten you rejected early on in life. And when we internalize rules about what we cannot do, we tend to extend those rules outward onto other people. So when a fearful avoidant sees other people doing what they believe is playing the victim or making a show out of their vulnerability or exaggerating things that the fearful avoidant was never able or allowed or safe to do in their early life, there can be this feeling of resentment that gets projected outwards as judgment onto those people, right? Because they're breaking this rule that's been internalized about not showing any emotional vulnerability. So sign three that you are starting to heal from the fearful avoidant attachment style is that you are okay with other people showing vulnerability because you no longer have to have that outer critic active that is trying to keep everyone else in check by following the rules that you internalize because you no longer believe that it is deeply shameful to feel any of those things. And that's, again, going to come as a product of your own internal work and your own getting comfortable with feelings of vulnerability, of need, of a desire for interdependence. And the more comfortable you become in that area, the less you feel hostile and judgmental towards other people who are open about their experiences and their emotions. It's just kind of a justice thing, right? Like when you are two years old, if you can't have a toy, you want nobody to have that toy. And also when you are two years old and much younger than that, if you can't have expressions of emotional vulnerability and need and be taken care of in response to that, you grow up believing that it's not fair for anyone to be able to show vulnerability and get love and support in response to it. So you might tend to think that people are always over-exaggerating when they're putting those things out into the world, but that's absolutely not the case. And the more healing work that you do, the more comfortable you become whether people are exaggerating that or not, right? Because when we're able to properly differentiate between ourselves and other people, it doesn't threaten us when others behave in a way that we would not consider it acceptable for us to act, unless it of course directly influences us in some way. So even if someone is playing the victim, exaggerating their vulnerability, making a big show out of something that doesn't need to be a big show, we're able to just disconnect from that, recognize that's something they're going through, it has nothing to do with me, and quiet that outer critic because we've realized we can have different rules for the way that we run our own lives and the way that other people run their lives. So noticing that outer critic beginning to quiet is a key sign that you're starting to heal from the fearful avoidant attachment style. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that for today, but in the meantime, let me know in the comments what some aha moments were for you guys if you've started working on your attachment style and what you're maybe noticing is going right for you for the first time. Until next time, I love you guys. I hope you're taking care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you back here again really soon.